So have you picked your CPU yet? No, so the next step in picking the CPU is, we're talking to Intel, mm -hmm. is you wanna pick your performance tier. There are four performance tiers, i3, i5, i7, and i9. The i3s are for like work computers at an office, things where you're just doing spreadsheets, maybe not nothing complicated, word processing, things like that. An i5 may be a good gaming CPU if you're trying to be a, buy a gaming PC on a budget. Uh, i7 is probably a better gaming CPU because you can get a little bit more out of it. But in general, most games don't require a lot of cores. If you're really doing something real demanding, like video editing for my case, and you know it's gonna use all the cores, you might wanna step up to an i9. Once you pick your performance tier, the next thing to pick is your generation. Intel and AMD, for that matter, have different generation chips. And that means they got a new CPU with a completely different architecture than the last generation. And usually the architecture puts more stuff on it, like there's more everything. And so more memory, more cache. For example, the i9-9900K, that's a ninth generation, because the first number is a nine. So it's oh. not the 99th generation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But after that, now that we're in the teens, the 10th generation starts with one zero, and the current CPU generation now for Intel is 14. But you could buy maybe a 12th generation or 11th generation, or maybe you buy a 11th generation i7 for the price of a 13th generation i5. And the way you do that, I find that's easiest, is you go to Amazon, you type in i5, CPU, hit enter, and it will give you a list of those, and you can look at the prices, mm -hmm. and you can tell the generation, because that's the first two numbers in the CPU name. So you could save your budget, as well as getting much more power. Does the generation affect the compatibility with other parts? Yeah, it does. Uh, each new generation usually has a different socket, so it won't fit on other motherboards. But the real key, if you're building your own PC, is to pick the CPU you want, and then go buy the motherboard that works with it and the, and the memory that works with it. The last letter in your CPU name is oftentimes a suffix that tells you more about that particular CPU. For example, the one that we were just talking about, 9900K, mm -hmm. K means that CPU is unlocked and can be overclocked. Another suffix that's real common and worth knowing about is the F suffix. The F suffix says there is no graphics GPU in the CPU. A lot mm. of CPUs nowadays have graphics built in. Like for you, if you bought a laptop, you wouldn't have a graphics card. You would just have built-in graphics capability in the CPU. And as well, any kind of problems you have during the build, it's nice to have. And it usually only costs an extra 10 or $20. Oh, that's it. 